Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kravinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at Classic FX 2.2 update. Now, I already did a video on Classic FX 2.0 update, so if you haven't watched that, I'll put a link above, and I strongly recommend you watch that because I'm not going to repeat all the stuff that I already went into there. So check that out. What I want to look at here is the three new things that Classic FX 2.2 has had added. Now, before I mention anything about them, let me say I've got three copies of the app to give away to subscribers to the channel. Thanks a lot, Igor. Very kind of you. Now, um, look at the pinned comment at the top of the YouTube comment section if you're watching in the first two days of release of the video to see the details of how to win. And if you're watching after that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future giveaways because I usually have codes to give away. All right, so uh, what does this new update bring? Well, basically it brings a few really important things. So one very cool thing is that it has this great LFO section, and that's the main thing I'm going to focus on today. I'm going to show you how to use the LFO section. It's actually very straightforward when you understand it, but it can be a bit bewildering at first. I mean, it's always the way, actually, with a lot of these apps. Um, you know, something seems complicated until you understand it, and then you're like, what? Uh, this, uh, there were a few things about this that confused me at the beginning. So that's one of the things, right? It's got this cool LFO, and I'm going to let you hear in a second what this can all sound like. I just want to say first what I'm going to cover in the video. So the LFO is one thing. Second thing is it's had six new algorithms added. Now, let me just explain very briefly what uh, that means. So in this app, we have a bunch of different algorithms we can open up. We can see here what kind of effects each algorithm contains. For example, here I've got gated reverse, and that has a, so that's one of the new algorithms, by the way, that has a saturator going into a chorus, going into a notch filter, gated echo, reverse delay, vibrato, right? So we have a choice of different algorithms, and that's what I've chosen here. And then over here in slot B, we can load a different algorithm, or in this case, as you can see, I've actually loaded the same algorithm but what I've done is I've played around with the settings. So the two algorithms are not exactly the same. And then at the bottom, I'm using the LFO to morph between them. And the movement of that is being represented by this yellow line along the bottom. First thing to mention, and this is one of the things that could stump you at the beginning, if, if you have B pressed, it's just going to be sitting on B. It's not going to move around. Uh, if you have A pressed, that's going to be completely over on A. If you want the LFO to start moving, you need to make sure that A and B are both turned off, right? So that means on, and that's off. And see, as soon as I turn that off, now this line that represents the LFO is starting to move. Now, the first example I'm going to let you hear is a very subtle one. Uh, so after this, I'm going to go to another example which is a lot crazier to show you in more detail how the LFO actually works. First, I just want to really, at this point, just focus more on what a lovely uh, preset this is. Now, I have I have tweaked it, obviously. Um, as I've got two algorithms set up and I've changed the settings in them, so you can see I'm not using the original preset, so it's based on the gated reverse preset. Uh, so we'll listen to this now. Then the third thing that the app has had added, I just want to mention it now to get it out of the way, because it's a very important thing. It has had its parameters exposed finally, which is something I was very disappointed was not done in the 2.0 update. Uh, please, every developer, always just expose your parameters from the beginning. We all love nice exposed parameters. Best of all, they're Organized nicely, main, slot A, slot B, morphing LFO. So if we go in here, for example, we can see now we can modulate the LFO rate, depth. Again, we can do this for LFO 0, LFO 1, and so on and so on. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, and I'm not going to show you how to use them. Um, I might get over and look at that later in the video, but the kind of thing you can do is set up an external LFO, and use that LFO to modulate the LFOs or anything else, actually. Yeah, right, as we saw, all these different things from slot A, different things from slot B, all now modulatable. Right, look, see, 
This is the main morph fader. These are the ones for slot A. Echo feedback, modulation rate, blah, blah, blah. A bunch of different things. So it's great, right? So this is brilliant, right? So we got three things. We got new algorithms, we've got the LFO, and we've got exposed parameters. Now let's have a little listen. Here I've turned down the dry, turned down the wet so it's completely dry. What I've got here is an instance of Strummer, which is getting MIDI from piano motifs. I really love this. Now I'll just start adding a little bit. And I'll put it up fairly strong just to show you, you know, but obviously it's going to be up to you. You can use this effect very subtly, or you can do really crazy stuff with it, especially now that you've got the LFO. So in the next example I show you, I'm going to show you some really, you know, this can sound really wacky if you wanted to, but here it's not going to be too crazy. For example, we could morph from a completely dry one, right? So now this is totally dry to a completely wet or, or less wet one. Ah, well, I've got to change the LFO for that. Okay. See, now it's starting to come over. So let me take you into another example, a crazier one, and I'll go into the LFO in detail. I'll be back in a second. So here I have Droneo. Let me take off Classic FX a second. So let's get a bit wild here. Okay, so let's look, let's look at what's going on with the LF over here. So, um, right, so again, we have algorithm A here, we have algorithm B here. So this one is flutter shining. This is oversaturated. And we have A and B off, right? So the LFO is able to do its thing. And we can see here it's doing something very fast and it's going almost to the beginning of this morph fader, but not quite, right? So we'll, when we look at the LFO part, we'll see what's going on. And then over here, it's going, so, oh, I think it's going to the end there, looks like. Well, let's go and see the LFO and see what's happening. So you see, we can see here, here it is touching the end, and here it is almost coming to the end, right? So if we go back 
out here again then, right? What we can see. So A, it's not going quite to the end. So that means basically this line is representing A. And this line is representing B. Of course, it depends because we're setting the start point. So basically, this what it represents really is this point and the point that would be reached depending on where we set this slider. So if this is here and this is right down here, then that's going to you know, basically take you from A to B. But if, if this is here, this will be the start point and uh, you can see, you see here the way it's working back from that. Okay, so that's very important to play around with these things and be aware of what's going on here. Now here we can, let's look first, so LFO0, here we have the rate. I'm not going to use the mouse for this, I'm going to use my hands, it works better. There's a really nice, really nice interface, yeah. Uh, some apps, the sliders just aren't great. You know, a lot of apps that get ported from um, desktop, for example. <coughs> um, <laughs> this is totally made for touchscreen interface. It works brilliantly. So here we have the rate. And you notice if you pay attention here, look at these numbers as I change this because it's auto scaling. Now, by the way, you can see here also the speed of that LFO, right? See how that's changing? So here it's only going up to 12.8 seconds. That's because I have fasts selected here. See, when it's slow, see now, it's going up to 139 seconds. So here we have our depth, right? So you can see here, um, this was A, wasn't it? Yeah, right. So it's going to be mostly lingering around the A territory now. You see, it's not really doing much there. It's not got much movement in it. Let's uh, change that depth. You see now it's starting to move over here. Um, okay, so that's LFO zero. Now we can change here saw or sine wave, we can change free or synced. Um, then when we come to LFO1, right, so let's see. Whoa, see, again, I won't use the mouse. So I'm just playing with the LFO1 depth slider. So change C, we can come up with all kinds of extremely complex trajectories for the LFO, and changing things like slow and fast. Look at that. Look how crazy that is. Let's have a listen to that. See the difference? Much faster. Whew. This is so cool. <laughs> Here we can change the relationship between LFO naught and one. So add or multiply. So we can do the same over here for the relationship between LFO2 and LFO1, add or multiply. So 
so I mean this is just so cool I think we have face control here so those face things are quite nice to play basically like as a live performative tool here by the way this just controls the rate of the the normal A to B morphing if you're not using the LFO. I showed that in my last video, I won't cover it again. Okay, let me pop out and let you hear another uh, one of the new algorithms we'll back in a second. So back here, uh, same setup except I've changed to the bit crusher algorithm. This can be really nice. So let's just have a little play around with that. I'll just play around with some of the knobs and things. As I say, I'll use my finger because the mouse does not work very well for this kind of curved interface, at least not for me anyway. I much prefer using my finger. This mouse is still doing weird things. See, let's bring the little follower down, right? See, that's what I say, a lot of the effects are going to be subtle. You want to get things heavy, then one of the things you can try is whack up the effect level and bring your follower value down very low. By the way, you see here, even in this small size, this I can slide it extremely easily just by putting my finger anywhere on it. it really works well. And the interface resizes very well. See, I told you we can get crazy with this thing. Okay, so just a quick look. Like I said at the beginning, if you haven't watched my earlier video on that, I would strongly recommend that. It's going to give you a much more detailed guide of how to use the app. But um, great update, great update. Uh, I haven't gone through all the new algorithms. Um, get them and check them out. Check them out yourself. You can see in the App Store, uh, the names of the algorithms are Backtalk, Bitcrusher, Oversaturate, Gated Echo, Gated Reverse, and Shining. And these are all based on reverse delay, saturation, and distortion, which were features that the previous update 
uh, didn't have in its algorithms. Okay, so um, really, really loving the new app. Sounds great. Love the LFOs. That's so much fun just playing around with those things. So much fun, my God. All right, then, everyone, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Don't remember, don't forget to subscribe. Don't remember, don't forget to subscribe and stuff if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. That is basically the kind of currency of YouTube that shows YouTube that you uh, found this useful. Um, yeah, and write a comment. Uh, I often reply to comments as the channel gets bigger. It's getting harder to reply to every comment. I really can't reply to everyone anymore, but um, I do try. Uh, so yeah, especially if you write an interesting comment or a question, it's far more likely I'm going to reply to it. I really do try always to reply to questions and stuff like that. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll just try and direct you somewhere where you might be able to get it. Okay, everyone. Take care, uh, enjoy your day or your evening, whatever time zone you're in. I'll see you next time.